also we have to be mindful of the, the opportunity for envy and being on the receiving end of envy and mm-hmm. how we respond to it. Um, mm-hmm. Because it can trip you up on either side. Welcome to What to Say and How to Say It. Today we're going to be talking about the next verse in 1 Corinthians 13, where God says love does not envy. We have talked about how love is patient. We've talked about how love is kind. And now we're switching it up uh, to not envying and how that shows up. So when I think about envy, um, I honestly have to say, I I have to think really hard because um, it's not obvious to me how envy shows up in communication. Um, I don't know about you, Nina, but when I think of envy, I think of some really crazy things, you know, the things that you hear about in the news, these crimes of passion, um, you know, things that just are really extreme. So, you know, I know that's not usually where it starts, um, but uh, maybe we can talk about uh, what that looks like in day-to-day interactions Mm -hmm. and maybe help our listeners understand how it does start, um, even in the minor conflicts that we have at home or work or at church. I I love how you're so professional and everything because I'm sitting over here thinking of being a ten year old and envying my friend Mandy's Briar horse collection like she had them all and I wanted to steal them <laughs> I envied all of them. I I spent nights before going to sleep plotting how I could take all of them and not get caught right I never did it but I certainly envied that. And then, you know, the girl in junior high, they got the boy that I wanted to date. I envied that, Mm. you know, and then um, the, the guy that got the position at work before I did. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, it's like this green monster. Um, Right. And if I remember the, the word in um, Corinthians actually means to, um, boil with zeal. Mm. Now that sounds intense, right? And I think it's like that because it feels like this icky, green, monstery, just disgusting thing that's motivating. It's it just, it, ugh. and it's, it's a, it's tied to the 10 commandments. Thou shalt not covet. Right. Right. That's yeah. Right. So that's easy to understand. It's, you know, not want the thing that somebody else has, but what is that? So love doesn't do that. Okay cool means I don't do. Okay. What am I doing? How do you know that though? Like, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And how does that show up when we're, you know, communicating, you know, mm-hmm. is it, is it so obvious or is it that thing that's just hidden in the heart that comes out in an indirect way? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you see it ruin communities, you know, whether it's churches or businesses um, you see, I've seen this a lot in some churches where people get, um, they get permission to do a thing. And then somebody gets jealous or envious that they got permission. Well, they didn't even ask that other person didn't even ask to go do the thing. Um, but, but someone else does a thing, they step up and then there's all this envy stuff going on. And then, you know, well, how come she's in her Bible study or how come he's taking his class instead of mine? You know, that's like, Mm. why does this even exist? Like, where do those thoughts come from? There's nothing holy about Right. any of that. And it's really selfish. I think envy is like the most selfish thing. Well, maybe not the most, but it's pretty doggone selfish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That might be a root. Yeah. I, I also think about Satan, you know, and that whole interaction he had, you know, and, and how he wanted God's place and, and, mm. you know, the envy that came there and mm. like, mm-hmm. Oh boy, you know, that's in us, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, if we're not careful, we can start operating like Satan did, right? Mm-hmm. And um, you're right. It, it's, it's often very obvious when there's competition involved. Mm-hmm. Um, I notice um, 
you know, with my kids, you know, when there's one feels more attention is being given or feels like something unfair has happened. Um, also at work, that position everybody wants and is vying for, you see it there. Um, but it's, <laughs> it's everywhere, you know, yeah. it's yeah. definitely in us. Well, and probably one of the worst moments I've had as a professional person was I, I went, this is probably 32, 33 years ago. So, you know, I was much younger. So that's my excuse of the day, um, <laughs> not to be defensive or anything there. Uh, I'm not proud of this, but I, I had, my boss had, um, you know, I was working for Dale Carnegie and I, I had a, a person that was supposed to be in charge of my development. And I didn't get a particular training assignment. It was for this big corporation. I was brand new. I was so green behind the ears. I just gotten certified, right? And I'm thinking, I'm arrogant enough to think that I'm supposed to get this huge responsibility with this large corporate class. And, and my boss gave it to somebody else. And she's supposed to be responsible for my development. And I, because she's a training director or something. And I, I called him up and I said, so what's so-and-so's role in my development supposed to be? And he's like, well, what do you mean? I said, well, she gets this big corporate class, but she never shows up at any of my classes to give me any kind of developmental options. And he says, she's not coming to your classes. She's supposed to be coming to your classes. <laughs> and, and there was the, I know, right? Your eyes are getting so big. <laughs> yes, I did this. I totally did this. I, and I hate that I did this. It was, it was like the most um, underhanded, okay, let's call it what it was. It was evil. It was just just evil. I, I wanted to take her down and it was jealousy and, and selfishness. I thought, I literally thought I should get that class because I'm that cool. Right. So I did this thing and, and I think, and later it was probably, I, I was a brand new Christian. I had no idea that that was even wrong. And about three, four years later, I had this aha moment. Oh my word. I felt awful. Right. And, and the thing I felt the worst about, cause nothing happened to her. And then, and then she started showing up at my, up at my classes, you know, <laughs> Oh, great. <laughs> you know, so I got, yeah. So I didn't need that, but there it was. Um, uh, but the, the, the thing was, is that I didn't even know. And when I did the thing that bothered me the most was that that was inside me. Yeah. But I think, I think unless we, and, and Jordan Peterson talks about this. I have this feeling if we can't acknowledge that we're, we have that kind of garbage in us, that we can have that kind of nasty. And, and Jordan Peter, Peterson says, you know, if you're not aware of the own malevolence within you, you're naive and you're going to get taken advantage of all over the place. You need to understand what you're capable of. And yeah, it should ter terrify you. But to not have that awareness makes us naive. Right. Well, what does that got to do with envy, right? Um, well, it certainly shouldn't be in us, but I think everybody on the planet, like you said, has it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I also think that when we're operating in that space, it's almost like we're limiting God mm -hmm. as if he can't bless us in the same way, if not more than the next person. So it's almost like, we're just not believing him for whatever that thing is, mm -hmm. such that we have to fight over it. And it's so ridiculous when you think about, when I think about the times where God has withheld something from me or delayed something, or just flat out said, no, this is mm -hmm. not for you. This is mm -hmm. for this person. Nine times out of 10, he had something better for me. Yeah. Um, but in that moment, you know, I wasn't thinking that at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've been on the, the so-called boss side of things, right. Mm -hmm. Where, um, yeah, I've had in the teams that I've managed have been, you know, lots of women, lots of men, and some of them, and then human resources thing, all women. And Oh my word, some of the challenges that came from both genders, not kidding, mm -hmm. was, would be when I give somebody an assignment and, uh, and sometimes a lot of times I'd float it out there. Hey, I want to do this thing. Who's interested. And then people would let me know. And then we'd figure out who was going to do what. Um, but sometimes I'd pick somebody to go do a thing. And then inevitably, almost every time I did that, which was hardly ever, but somebody would say, would come to me and say, well, how come they got to do that? 
<laughs> and well, cause they had the, this particular skill set. Well, why didn't you ask me to do that? And I'm sitting there thinking, I mean, this has happened to me a number of times. And, and I always have the same thought. You don't even have that skill set. Why are you asking me this question? Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And then, then I had one person with the audacity of saying, well, you haven't developed me enough so I could have that opportunity. And I looked at them and I said, look, here's the deal. This is not about you. Yeah. If you want to grow in your skill set, you think about the positions you want to have in the organization, you go figure out what that looks like. Just because I go do something with this other person over here has nothing to do with you. So you figure out your career path and we'll help you make that happen. Absolutely. But this thing you're doing, comparing and wanting something that wasn't even on the table for you because you do not have that skill set. Now you're going to blame me for not developing that in you. I'm not real motivated to promote you. This is not leadership material here. So you need to go check that attitude before we have further discussions around that. <laughs> it has really blunt, but it's ugly. And yeah, you know, I don't want, I don't want and, and this hasn't, that particular thing didn't happen recently. Not, I mean, it's not, this is a long time ago, like over 20 years ago, but to have people in the ranks and leadership that are like that, that are motivated by competition and envy and doing better than other people. I don't want them. I don't want them. And, and you mentioned at the beginning, um, where does this show up in communication? And I think it, it shows up as support. Mm. So mm. if I can support you and be truly happy that you got whatever you got right Right. Mm -hmm. and not make it about me in any way shape or form yeah 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 you're right I think about the people in my life that have been supportive and you know when when I have a win and they really feel like they've also won those are the people that have achieved their own wins. Those are the people that have uh, have experienced love at the highest level. So they're not mm-hmm. um, threatened by you know me being loved or mm-hmm. me winning. And so um, you're right. Uh, when when God says love does not envy, it means think about to me the ways that I've loved you. The ways that I've I've mm. I've allowed you to succeed, the ways that I've I've allowed you to win, and and that should move you away mm-hmm. from envying anything that anyone else has. Mm-hmm. Um, so oh, that's good. That's yeah, good. even the gifts that he gives us. Yeah, talents. Oh, that's a thing I've seen at church. Oh, that shows up at church. Um, that person that yeah you think is, uh, super gifted and they're always the one out front. And that, that, that person's the one that's praised. Oh, yeah. That green monster comes out there all the time. (laughs) Um, but, but, uh, what's cool when you mature out of that place is you start to see the body operate as a body. Yeah. Where we all have different gifts. Mm -hmm. And when we're really focused on our gift, it just is such a beautiful thing. Um, but yeah, that takes maturity. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't have that for a long time. <laughs> and sometimes I still don't. Um, but yeah, being up front, you know, I've always been kind of an upfront person because I grew up in radio. So ever, I mean, I can't remember a time when I wasn't on the radio. I mean, as a kid, yeah. little kid, you know, I'm in the studio with my dad, right. Cutting commercials and, And I worked for him for a long time. So I would say things or do things and I'd go to school and people had heard it. Right. So you're a fifth grader and you're on the radio. That's like some big deal. Now it's a a small town in Montana. Like, hello, there is no big deal there. There's none. It just doesn't exist. Right. Not a thing. But in the little crowd of 15 fifth graders that are in your you know, hometown oh, class. Yeah. 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 And, and I didn't know what to do with that. Cause people would, some people were mean about it mm. and you know, that envy, that jealousy, and, and it made no sense to me. I was kind of naive about it. So I, I guess I hadn't in, interacted with my own uh, plot to steal Mandy's horses by, at that point yet, but <laughs> it just hadn't. 
but it, it surprised me. Um, and I didn't understand it because it was just my dad and me in the studio. Yeah, I mean, it's like right. nothing, right? right. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing with speaking and writing books and all that stuff. It, it's always surprising to me that people think that's something. Mm. And, and, and I will tell you the weirdest experience I had with all of that was this person came up to me and said, I heard you on focus on the family. And I said, yeah, that, that was really interesting. <laughs> and they said, yeah, you think you're all that. And I said, tell me what I did that communicated that. Cause I don't want to come across that way. And they said, well, nobody's ever done that with me. I've written three books and nobody, and they're not even picked up by anybody. And you're not even an author and you get the, and I'm like, holy heck. And I said, you know what? I'm really sorry. You're absolutely right. I did nothing to deserve this. You're spot on. Yeah. God just handed me this thing. And, you know, I will pray for you about your writing career. Cause it sounds like you've worked really hard. And then I walked away and went, wow, can this not happen ever again? Because that was not fun. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. And, and people say, you, you know, you're somebody when the haters come out. I haven't had that many haters, which is about in alignment with, you know, not being somebody, somebody, you know, um, but having a couple books published that people think you are something special. And really, we're all the same. We really are. I've got people on our team that are way better writers than I will ever be. Mm-hmm. I mean, they make things look like art and it's beautiful. Um, and I can't explain how God does stuff. Um, but being on the receiving end of somebody else's envy, yeah, you know, that stunk. I remember that so clearly. And when I think about the first time that, you know, I showed up at church and the book came out and, you know, this is the respect there back 2012. Mm-hmm. Um, there were so many people that were so excited for me, mm-hmm. really stoked. And my family, my kids were like cheering. My husband edited the thing. So he was like really happy about it, um, that they picked it up and all of that. And, and I remember going to church and out of all the stuff that happened, that's the thing I remember most. And that's sad. Because the, the people were really supportive, but that's the impact that so, that kind of stuff can have as it sticks with you. And then, it, and then I know I had to go through healing prayer on this, like for real. Wow. Then I was like, I, I was afraid to keep blogging because, yeah. you know, I'm like, okay, here comes some more haters. You know, I'm just doing this thing that God's asked me to do and somebody's going to hate on me for it. And you know what? I'm glad it all happened because it's, I was way too sensitive <laughs> Like the first couple people that would mean to me on my blog, I mean, I would cry, you know, right. <laughs> it's so pathetic. This is, you know, almost two decades ago, 15 years ago or something. Anyway, um, now it's nothing. It's, it's just, is I can, God's mature me to the point where I don't, I don't care if I'm up front. And I did back then really, I, you know, even as recently as a decade ago, I was like, oh my gosh, this is really cool. And I like being up front. And then you get too busy and it's like, okay, I got to delegate half of my life here. <laughs> <laughs> and you mature and you see how the body works. I mean, our whole ministry is just the body. It's a beautiful thing. Um, but now it's like, none of that matters. It just doesn't. Cause I'm so most of the time, I'm just so on focus, so on mission that I don't care what people say. It's just, that's irrelevant. Um, Unless I'm hangry or, you know, <laughs> tired. Yeah, yeah, or in a bad place or mm-hmm. some scathing thing that said that hits a mark that Satan fine tuned and accurately, you know, and I let it through. That happens once in a while, but not anywhere near like it used to. Wow. <sighs> that stuff is mean. <laughs> it's so interesting that that person. Um, was very direct and in your face about it. That, oh, that yeah. to me is is remarkable because usually those feelings are kind of indirect. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of like your example with, you know, the lady on on the training team. It, you know, it was kind of a backstab versus she was just in your face with it. Like mm-hmm. this is what I think. And mm-hmm. um, man, that uh, can really test your, your sanctification, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Yeah. Well, and your belief in the body, like we launched the first class we ever did for the ministry and that we launched it at a marriage retreat. And so Sunday or Saturday, we launched this thing. I get home two hours later, I get this phone call from somebody and then I, and I pick up the phone. I've never talked to this person in my life. I pick up the phone and they say, who do you think you are? And I'm like, 
well, I'm just Nina. Who is this? <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. And um, there, yeah. So that conversation ended up in, in me telling them, you know, I don't think you should take the class. I, I'm sorry that, you know, us launching this thing, it's offended you. I wasn't my intention. I don't even know this person. Right. Um, and then what was interesting is that the, we did the class again, cause it was a huge success. People wanted it. And then this person came then because she heard all these conversations from people about it. And she ended up being one of our biggest fans. So, oh, I'm so wow. yeah, I'm so glad that, you know, I'm thankful because I'm a hundred percent sure there's a Holy spirit in the way yeah. that I interacted with people. Cause yeah. there were so many spaces of like, I, when you know who you are, like I knew what we were doing was good. Mm-hmm. So if somebody's thing at me is like, Oh, they don't understand. It's all right. You know, didn't bother me. Um, yeah. And that speaks to how I think uh, we should handle it in communication because sometimes you're, you're so uh, caught off guard, you know, when it comes at you and you're on the receiving end of it, that you're not sure how to respond to it. And, and I think, I like what you said, when you know who you are in Christ, mm-hmm. it doesn't really um, bother you and you can respond in love and grace toward that person um, with hopes that they will actually come around. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that's cool how God did that and brought her back around to where she's now a supporter of the thing that she was upset about. Right? <laughs> yeah, I know. only God can do something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I struggle um, with envy and that's the place where I forget who I am. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, I've, I've got this incredible blessing with a number of friends that have horses, own their own horses. A couple of them have their horses on their land. I live in a suburb, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I've been riding horses for like 45 years, but um, I haven't actually had one in my backyard. Right. And I, and I want that. Like, I really want that. Yeah. And, and so sometimes I fight. Um, the temptation to be envious of my friends and their situation. And they let me ride their horses. Like, I don't even get that, but they do. And, and, you know, when I think about that, the Lord always reminds me to be grateful for the now that I'm in and what I have at the moment, which is these amazing friends, these amazing horses. And I am learning a lot and I need to be patient with it and not want something that I don't have yet. And maybe I'll never get it but I can be grateful now to choose to be envious ruins it all. Yeah. It It makes, it makes the blessing. It's like it sours it or something. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And you know, when I hear you, it's interesting because when I hear you talk about how often you get to ride Mm -hmm. envy rises up in me. Oh, oh. (laughs) now we're getting to it. (laughs) That was honest. Whatever that means, if, you know, it's like, I wish I had a friend with horses. You know? <laughs> I actually had a horse my grandfather gave me years ago, and she wasn't taken care of very well. And so she ended up being put down. And so I have this thing inside of me that, you know, I want to get back to it. But it's like, it's just not available to me right now. So when I hear people like you who have that life, it's like, <gasps> tell me more. You know, yeah. what that, yeah. what, so, you know, it's, it's, it's funny because it, it's levels to this, right? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. one man's trash is another man's treasure. And mm-hmm. so it's so important that we are thankful mm-hmm. for what God has allowed because, Hey, I've learned the hard way. He can just as easily snatch it away, you know? Yeah. And yeah, that's true. Um, that's absolutely true. And, and, you know, thank you for that confirmation mm-hmm. around the, the, being grateful piece, you know, because I imagine in your shoes, I mean, I, well, I did this with my friend, Mandy, she had a horse. She not only had the entire Briar collection, but she had her a- or actual own physical horse. Right. Yeah. I was so jealous of that. Right. And, and she would complain about not being able to ride every single day. And I'm like, I get to ride like twice a month. How dare you complain about that? You know, in my yeah. head, I was so jealous that I'm like, rah, rah, rah. Um, but in, yeah, I think talking about this stuff, um, just being honest about it, you know, confessing it, bringing it out in the light, you know. So thanks for the reminder. I, oh. I really do have a lot to be thankful for, 
you know, oh, and one of my dreams, honestly, this, this is a wild one, but I'd love to have, um, like, like we're doing this conference in, um, May and mm-hmm. a bunch of women are coming up for it. And says, so, and, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> we're not doing that this time, but I would love, even if it's just a staff retreat and I say just, but, you know, that'd be amazing too, to have all 10 of us, you know, the, the staff and the volunteers oh. together and use horses Oh, for oh. some kind of, I know, right. Wouldn't oh. that be amazing? That would be she, so cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to have the resources to be able to do that. And I almost said something with horses. And then I had this thought that I'm, oh, now I'm writing country music because resources and horses rhyme. Sorry. I shouldn't have gone there. <laughs> Anyway, we were talking about envy today and um, my big takeaway from this discussion, love does not envy, is that it really is about our character and our identity Mm -hmm. and we tell a lot about where we're at with that Yeah, by how we feel about other people's successes. Yeah. And I think also we have to be mindful of the the opportunity for envy and being on the receiving end of envy and mm-hmm. how we respond to it um, mm-hmm. because it can trip you up on either side if yeah. you're not careful. Mm-hmm. So it's an ugly thing when it shows up, but um, if, like you said, we are sure of who we are in Christ, if we understand how blessed we are and there's gratitude, mm-hmm. um, you know, love is still possible. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, very true. So what do we want to give people? So if you want to learn more about how to love in your communication, uh, check out our website, greaterimpact.org. We have a free e-booklet available for you. We have other programs we do. We do coaching. We do uh, courses. So uh, check us out if you have time. <laughs>